Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. So we just found this number. Now we're going to find the total, and however much is not generated by the occupants, the rest will have to be done by the humidification. So let's find out the total moisture loss now. So the formula we want to use for this is that the mass flow rate of water, and this is the total now, is equal to the mass flow rate of air that's being removed from the space or added to the space, it's that 800 CFM, times the difference in the humidity ratio between the two air streams. The air that's being exfiltrated has high humidity, and the air that's being introduced has low humidity. So it's that difference multiplied by the volume of air that tells us the volume of water vapor that's being lost. And there's a little trouble with this in that the mass flow rate of air is actually different for the two streams. We know the volume is the same, right? The volume out and the volume in have to be equal. And in general, we're satisfied to divide the volume flow rate by the specific volume, which will give us the mass flow rate. And then this number is in CFM, so we'll also have to multiply by 60 minutes per hour because we want to do this in a per hour basis. So that's fine with the understanding that the exhaust air and the outside air conditions are significantly different because it's very cold and dry outside. So I recommend using the respective specific volumes, little v, that we're dividing by here because the density is so different for those two streams. There's a good chance you can get away with this by just picking one and using it or choosing an average value. Sometimes I'll just use 13 and a half cubic feet per pound of dry air. And you may be able to do that in most applications and you may be able to do that here. But just to really sharpen up pencils on this one, I'm gonna use the actual specific volumes at those two sets of conditions to show you how you would handle this if you want it to be precise, or if you were doing a multiple choice problem where the answer choices were close, you'd want to be attentive to this. So let's look up the humidity ratios and specific volumes for the inside and outside conditions. We'll start with the inside, where the temperature is 75 degrees and the humidity is 40%. The humidity ratio is 0 0.00739 pounds of water per pound of dry air. And by the way, when I do these lookups, I use a psychrometric calculator, so it's very precise. I'm getting a lot of digits here. If you're using a psychrometric chart, you probably won't get this level of precision, but that's completely fine. The reason the psychrometric chart is a good tool is because it allows us to pick off numbers that are reasonable. And if, if you're acquiring a level of precision that's beyond what the chart can provide, you're probably getting stuck in the weeds and, and the design tolerances are just not that high. Plus, if you're preparing for the PE exam, you won't have a psychrometric calculator available. You will be forced to use the psychrometric chart. So I recommend you use the chart. I just use the calculator because it's quick and easy. And the specific volume for those inside conditions is 13.69 cubic feet per pound of dry air. Okay, now outside the temperature is 25 degrees and the humidity is 20%. And the humidity ratio is 0 0.00054. And the specific volume is 12.28. Okay, so let's start to plug into our equation with this substitution and with the distribution of the specific volume so that it lives in each of these terms here. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So the mass flow rate of water in total, the total moisture loss, is our 800 CFM, which I'll write as cubic feet per minute so we can see all the units cancel, times 60 minutes per hour. And now instead of dividing by the specific volume, which is different for inside and outside, I'm gonna distribute that little v to these two terms. So now this becomes humidity ratio over specific volume minus humidity ratio over specific volume. So we'll do the inside first because that's the high humidity, 0 0.00739 over 13.69 cubic feet per pound. And by the way, you're welcome to work in grains. I chose to work in pounds here. Sometimes it's easier to use grains because you'll have a bigger number, probably an integer number. For the outside term, we have a humidity ratio of 0 0.00054 and a specific volume of 12.28. So what you might notice here is the pounds of dry air terms cancel out and what you end up with 
is pounds of water per cubic foot, which is the absolute humidity. So the distinction between humidity ratio and absolute humidity, which are often used interchangeably but are not the same thing, humidity ratio is pounds of water per pound of dry air, and absolute humidity is pounds of water per cubic foot, it's per unit volume. So for example, when I use the psychrometric calculator, which is able to give these very precise numbers, it can also give absolute humidity. So you could shortcut this process and just look up the absolute humidity, pounds of H2O per cubic foot, and skip over having to do this. But I show it this way because in a test environment, you're using the psychrometric chart. You probably won't be able to pull absolute humidity directly from the chart. It's usually not offered. So this is the way you're going to do it. You're going to pull the humidity ratio, which is going straight to the right on the chart, pulling it off that right axis. And you're going to get the specific volume because that's offered on the diagonal. So then the minutes cancel out and the cubic feet on the denominator are going to cancel with this cubic feet. And ultimately we're going to end up with pounds of water per hour, which is exactly what we want for a mass flow rate. If you crunch all those numbers, you get a mass flow rate, which is the total moisture loss resulting from this exchange of air of 23.8 pounds per hour. And now circling all the way back to our original equation, total moisture loss equals latent occupant load plus humidification. We now know the occupant load, we know the total moisture loss. Let's rearrange this and subtract total minus occupant to find the humidification. 